All right. Uh, on my way to work, uh, going to make some deliveries today. And I thought, while I do that, we uh, go ahead and do this final video on the three-parter of art and AI. Um, I'm actually heading uh, south to the Amazon hub. They sent me there a lot. Same day shipping. They need a bunch of packages that need to go out today. So I'm on a bit of a schedule, but I also have a bit of a drive until then. Uh, road work here. Okay. And uh, I figured, yeah, we'll chat. I'll go ahead and talk with you about what I'm planning to do with uh, artificial intelligence. So, let me go ahead and get around here real quick. In fact, I need this. In the beginning, humanity sought to harness the sun to control the weather and have some fun. They built the Athena, a powerful machine, to study the Earth and make it pristine. But soon they found it could do much more, control space-time, and open new doors. The laws of nature it could bend and break, and humans could travel through wormholes and shape. But the day it was destroyed was the day all fell, and the earth was plunged into a living hell. The cataclysm, it was called, a terrible fate, as the Athena exploded, sealing earth's fate. EMP blasts went off, destroying all tech, and the earth shook with earthquakes, leaving a wreck. Volcanoes erupted, and storms raged on, as shadow walkers entered, and the world was gone. The big freeze came with minus 60 degree cold, and survivors were forced to flee, young and old. Then the big thaw marked the dust ages start as the earth warmed up and flooding tore us apart. The landscape changed and tribes would form, sanctuaries and bandits, both were the norm. Some technology survived, robots and drones, as the world was mostly now death and groans. The dust age was here, and the planet was dead, all because of the Athena that went to our head. We tried to be the gods, and it all went wrong, and now humanity must suffer and sing a sad song. during the day and then at night I or the weekends I'll do uh, uh, Amazon deliveries uh, DoorDash I'm, I'm trying to get on board with uh, another courier company if I do this full-time until I get to you know, making a living at running my business and the, the projects that I've been working on uh, I, I love I love courier work I love being a delivery person it's, uh, yeah, make your own schedule. Uh, and I've learned a lot about time management. Uh, yeah, like working two, three jobs and then trying to get a business off the ground and make time for my projects. I've learned how valuable time really is and how you should take every second and devote it to what you should be doing and what's right for you. And uh, spending it with people that will value you and your time, and, and uh, yeah. So uh, the use of AI that I well, the, the 
the way I use artificial intelligence right now is that you've heard me say in the last couple of videos is I use it for uh, mainly art and storytelling. I'd like to one day use it maybe for film. Um, it, uh, it definitely uh, is probably going to be heading that way in just a few short years. We're going to have a Corelite Corel light box. All right. uh, we're going to have a uh, much more advanced forms of AI. Uh, Google just announced that uh, they're going to change their search engine, and I think a lot of this is to compete with Microsoft because their search, their their search engine, uh, Bing, just incorporated Chat GPT, and I'm sure you guys have heard about it in the news. If you haven't, Chat GPT is an artificial intelligence program where you basically can talk with it like a human. It can do a number of different things for you. Um, it, uh, it just updated it, so now it's Chat GPT 4. Uh, it's the smartest thing I've talked to that I know of right now um, that isn't a human, but uh, it has a, a, a large amount of information that you, if you need, to, if you have questions about something, uh, anything, it, it'll it'll write things up for you. It'll it'll. I know some people at my my day job uh, use it for. Computer programming. Some graphic designers, web designers are using it. Uh, that will ask it to make the code, and, and then they'll uh, take that code that's pretty accurate. Most of the time, I've heard that they don't have to do many much tweaking or edits with the code. They literally just copy and paste, and then they put it in the um, uh, they put it wherever it is what on the website they're needing to create. And this thing generated all that in just a matter of seconds. So for me, I've used right now. I've been using a lot of ChatGPT, but uh, our generators wise, I've been using Midjourney and Stable Diffusion. And there's a new program uh, I'm looking into that is really good at converting uh, sketches or photographs and then turning those into uh, whatever you perceive in your mind, what you want to see visually. It'll it can do it. Uh, have to, uh, I think there's a few more programs out there that are doing that, and that's, they're all artificial intelligence. So, for me, what I want to use AI for, like I said, and I have been using it, is for art and storytelling. Uh, for my business, uh, I mentioned a little bit last, last video that I want to incorporate the technology uh, in, maybe even to the point where that is part of the foundation of the company. Uh, is using artificial intelligence because whether we like it or not it's here it's only going to grow it's only going to get faster it's only going to get better uh, it's going to it's already advancing us so quickly as a civilization i mean it's it's inevitable so we might as well to a certain degree to a certain degree we should embrace it forgot i had metal from work i was supposed to take the scrap yard whoops uh, oh i still put the packages back here so what I'm trying to, uh, what I want to do with it is incorporate the AI in a way that not only gives the people, get myself and the people that I hire to be able to work more efficiently and more quickly with artificial intelligence, I want to give other people, especially artists, writers, filmmakers, the opportunity to tell the stories they want to tell and do it in, uh, in, in an efficient, quick way, and I think the best route of doing that is utilizing artificial intelligence. Uh, I have a, a, a friend who's looking at stable diffusion code, and as I mentioned before, I'm, I'm taking some courses uh, to try to better understand machine learning. Because, uh, I guess in the last video, I want to be one of the first people riding that wave of how uh, AI is is bettering not only your business but our lives. So my project is called uh, The Athena Chronicles. Um, I had some friends tell me though that I should just name it after my business, The Long Lost Chronicles. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, either way, but it is the best way to, to describe what it is. It's it's a story 
it's a giant story within with several stories in it and uh it's it's several stories into one giant story and that giant story is basically it's a it's a it's a journey through human civilization told through the perspective of various characters in worlds and different centuries uh, before during and after the creation of its one of its greatest inventions and uh the way i want to the story is through a variety of media, uh, whether it's through comic books, short stories, novels, uh, graphic novels, a web series, television, film. My company, I want to, like, those are all the things I want to cover, or the things I'm covering now. Uh, with the, the Athena Chronicles, uh, there's so many stories that, I guess you could say, cover different genres, but it's all pretty much in the same I guess you could say the same universe. I mean, in a weird way, I guess it's the same multiverse. But, uh, yeah. So, I started utilizing AI for the project, or projects, and, and uh, uh, next thing I know, I've had years worth of written material being visually represented in just a matter of seconds. Uh, like I said, this, the, the project is multiple genres in one, different types of storytelling, uh, and uh, I guess, like I said, it's in the same universe or multiverse, whatever. Everything's somehow connected in some way, and, and the, 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 the Athena Chronicles, or Long Lost Chronicles, whatever, it, it's, I just want to explore different avenues with that, and AI is really helping me. So, like I said, I had years worth of written material now getting visual, visual representations uh, done in just a matter of seconds, all thanks to AI. And so that's when I realized, I was like, this has to be part of what I'm trying to build, what I'm building right now. And the more people I have involved and the more technology I have involved, I really think that this has the potential to really head in a way, head somewhere that I could not possibly even imagine, that none of us could. But, you know, who knows? I mean, I always leave room for disappointment. So, the first chapter, I guess you could say, or the first story in the, the kind of kickoff of the Athena Chronicles, or the Long Lost Chronicles, is uh, a story I, I, I started working on I originally sketched out this character. Uh, I needed to put something on Instagram. And at the time, uh, I was working at a restaurant, made some great friends there, people who... Uh, in two miles, keep right to take the exit. All right, so we're close. <clears throat> the, uh, the, the restaurant I worked at, I, I made some friends there. Uh, they, were, they were great co-workers. They were encouraging. They saw that I could draw and paint and they were like you should keep doing that and so at that time I was also I got really into uh, the, the, the Fallout video games like Fallout New Vegas and uh, uh, Fallout 4 and I had got those I had played Vegas when I was a kid but it, I, I, I ended up uh, getting it on uh, PC and Xbox and I was like oh, I'm gonna play this and the new the, the Fallout 4 game allowed you, and this is, I'm a sucker for games that are, uh, allow you to be creative. So in Fallout 4, the, you were allowed to customize and create a lot of different In one things. mile, keep right. Alright, so we've, uh, arrived at the pub station. And, uh, I'm a little bit early. So they won't let me check in until after 11.30. Where was I? Oh, yeah. So... In the game, you can build your own hideout. You can build a fortress. Uh, and uh, with the Fallout 4 on Xbox, was that's where I got it originally before I got it on PC. It was one of the first games I think I've ever heard of where you could actually use mods. And so that made the, 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 the gaming customization experience that much better. So uh, uh, building all kinds of stuff. Like I said, I, I'm, I'm, I'm totally... 
into anything. I'm, I'm addicted to anything that allows you to build things or create things in, in games. And uh, I got this, uh, this, uh, uh, it just, it clicked something in me to, uh, uh, well, playing Fallout 4 and Fallout New Vegas, I was like, I, you know, I kind of want to tell my own story in a, a similar genre. This, I just had a vision of this, like, post-apocalyptic uh, world. Uh, you know, I grew up with movies like Mad Max. Uh, one of my favorite movies in that subgenre is uh, The Book of Eli. Uh, and, and love Denzel Washington in that role. He's, he's brilliant in everything he does. Um, so, yeah. So I went ahead and one day I was just sketching a character in my sketchbook. And I posted it to Instagram. And at the time, I was... Uh, had my YouTube channel. I, I think I just started my YouTube channel, and uh, I was using Instagram for it. And uh, yeah, I was one of the first things I posted. I think it was the first image I posted. But something clicked after that. And uh, come uh, October in, in 2019, uh, I decided to participate in Inktober, and uh, I started every uh, every day I was doing a drawing and, and a, a sketch and then inking it and, and practicing my ink work and uh, as I noticed that there was a pattern everything I was doing seemed the same and then that as I was doing the story was developing in my head this world and uh, people were loving it they I posted on I was friends with a lot of people uh, from work but I was in, on Facebook and, and I had friends and family looking at what I was posting and it was just more and more encouragement and then, uh, uh, next thing I know, I, uh, uh, I'm, I'm world building. I'm building a story. I'm building all these characters and it just, I don't know. So the next October I was doing the same thing. I just, and, and, and in between the, the, the two, those two years I was writing notes down I was coming up with different ideas it just like it, it just wouldn't stop it was like it was telling itself <coughs> excuse me so uh, you fast forward now the next thing I know this is I always wanted to start my company I eventually started my company but I knew that I was building something beyond just this story or this world I was building something massive or I, well, at least I wanted to and I knew that I wanted to eventually make that the foundation or at least part of the foundation of my business so the first story in the Athena Chronicles is uh, uh, the story of the dust devil and uh, it's uh, originally I wanted to do it as a comic book series but like I said I want to cover uh, different mediums different media and uh, uh, and telling that story or stories uh, but uh, it is it, it takes place in our future our potential future um, after you know human civilization and their hubris and I, a lot of the times I've written stuff down or posted stuff on it in the notes it says that it was because of uh, human civilization tried to be like the gods and in their advance advancements they ended up actually destroying the entire planet and it's a different type of um, I wanted to make it different from other post-apocalyptic you know sci-fi uh, uh, worlds with but yet there's something similar to them like that so you could get that feel of like oh this is a post-apocalyptic world so in my version of that kind of that subgenre, I wanted um, I wanted the world to be. This is after we really advanced ourselves, and one of the things we used was artificial intelligence. Uh, we we tried uh, curing all disease. We tried to live forever, and uh, we even tried to control the climate and the weather. Uh, our, we tried to harness the energy of the entire planet. Um, I guess you could say we became a, uh, uh, we tried to become, or maybe we did become a, a type one civilization, which is uh, something I might go into later in another video about. It's based on the Kardashev scale. And, and one of the things that makes you a type one human, like a type one civilization is that you've harnessed and used 
every part of the planet for uh, for energy for yeah power um, so the world ends and what's left of it is basically what little of human civilization exists is trying to survive in this world and uh, the the main character is uh, is the dust devil or as I I originally named him as Kai Kinslow and then as time went on, I was like, I, I kind of like the nickname, The Dust Devil. And there's a reason behind that. Huh. Looks like I can go in now. Just waiting on a uh, 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 my route to be matched. So just stand by. All right, so we got our packages here. So we got... Uh, 32 uh, stops, 32 deliveries, and 35 packages. And load up the car. Not too bad. About two and a half hours, three hours. All right, we are fully loaded. Not a bad day. Not too long, not too short. I can usually knock out a three hour shift in about two hours, two and a half hours, so we'll see. Just gotta go fast perfect time to, to talk about this project because uh, the character I was talking about uh, so the character I was talking about uh, Kai Kinslow uh, he is uh, he lives in this world and he works as what you would call uh, a term I've made up called uh, Paralyst um, Paralyst is someone who specializes in uh, well a paralyst is, they act as both, in a weird way, kind of, you could say, armed couriers and uh, bounty hunters. They are paid to take client jobs that either mean they have to deliver a package or a family heirloom, something valuable, across the wasteland, which the, that, that part of the wasteland, the wasteland itself I call the punish lands. And most people reside in these walled towns called sanctuaries because the outside world is so dangerous and so brutal that they have to band together in these large communities and most of the time are walled off and or heavily guarded. And uh, a lot of people are afraid to venture out into the punished lands. It's that brutal. All right, so uh, back from work, uh, get myself a second, changed, and uh, ready to go uh, get a jog in. Not bad weather out. It's uh, a lot of the, what do you call it, the change in climate, the hot and cold, hot and cold. That's kind of messing with me a little bit, but yeah, we'll adapt. Anyway, let's continue what I was talking about. All right, so just finishing up here. Yeah, so that's where it takes place. Uh, the world is so I think you know, get to see other things like uh, get to see how the rest of what's left of human civilization is trying to survive. Some of them being together in tribes and other communities. And even like I mentioned earlier, some of these larger communities called sanctuaries. And uh, uh, we get to see a lot of land. Oh, that's right. Uh, what I was saying earlier about a perilous. So a perilous basically the client pays them whatever to take a family or live across the punished lands and uh, deliver it to whatever set destination. And uh, or they're paid a bounty, they're, they're given a bounty to hunt down a wanted criminal or set down a, a robot that's gone haywire or take care of some animals like predators that are terrorizing communities or tribes, what have you. And so they act, they specialize basically in danger, hence the name Perilous. Uh, so that is what my character Kai is all about. It's like, why is it so dark? Right, sunglasses. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, <clears throat> uh, so yeah, uh, Perilous specialized basically in danger. Specialist, peril, perilous. So you get perilous. Uh, they're also known as freelancers. 
um, but they do freelance work. It's an obvious one. Uh, for Kai, he's been doing it for a long time. Not much is known about him for sure. A lot of myths and rumors. He's a living legend. That's why he has the nickname the Dust Devil. But uh, he goes by other. They've, they've called. They call him other names throughout the wasteland, throughout the punished lands. Uh, the Wolf of the Wastes. Uh, the Spirit in the Sand. The Horseman of Death. Kai Kinslow. But more famously, he's known as the Dust Devil. So uh, with artificial intelligence in our generation, which is the big one right now, I used, uh, I mainly use stable diffusion and uh, mid journey. Uh, stable diffusion is a little easier to train. Mid journey, you've got to really kind of tweak some things. I, uh, right now, well, what I did is I wanted to find a way to, uh, I don't know, I guess you could say, have something that still felt like it came from me that I created but also save time and be be more efficient so what I do was I still do this I'll, I'll feed the AI uh, uh, some information and usually that's in the form of some sketches drawings paintings that I've done or, uh, or and or I'll use examples of what I'm trying to go for for a specific look or scene or whatever. And when I do that, I'll say, here, replicate. Basically, I'll tell the AI, or and I'll customize it and tweak it a little bit to just do this from here on out. I'll say, okay, go and replicate what I've just showed you with my art, try to put that same style. Uh, and it's, it's worked wonders and it's only gotten better. So when doing that, it definitely gets replicated, it gets, like I said, in the new version of Mid Journey, it's been, uh, it's been better. Super, it's like, it's, it's astounding. And actually it was in the news because they were doing uh, celebrity fake photos off the AI. And uh, uh, they, they started realizing this might be a problem worse than like the deep fake stuff. Um, but yeah, so now when I tell it to do something, it'll say, here's the drawing I made. Can you make this, the look and feel of this drawing you apply this to what I want to do from here on out or this painting or whatever and it does it and it saves so much time uh, and I, I think I'm gonna show you guys some of the stuff I've done just to kind of I was testing the waters trying to experiment trying to see what I could do and what I'm gonna utilize it for um, I produced a lot of material that definitely works uh, so it's it's I could start doing something with it officially now like yesterday so yeah I'll uh, I'll make the, the uh, a set of images and then I'll kind of put it together now I still have to do a lot of work but it does save the time of illustrating or whatever I have to do um, still working with Photoshop or other photo editing program programs to splice it all together to ed make edits to tweak things because as, as far as the AI has come in such a short amount of time there's always going to be a, uh, a few little hang-ups. It's a lot better, but there's still things that have to be edited. And uh, eventually one day that, that will go away. Um, who knows, maybe anywhere from, from one year or 10 years from now. I mean, it's so unpredictable now. We're so, we're so close to reaching the singularity, the technological singularity. Uh, yeah. I don't know, it's crazy to think about. Um, so that's what I'll, I'll use it for. Um, Chat GPT really saves time too with what I'm writing. Um, I'll basically feed it a script, say write things like this, write in this style or do this, and then uh, 
or sometimes I'll just have it rewrite. I'll type out an entire page. This is my writing process. I originally would just write everything out and go back and make edits afterwards. Now I can just have the AI edit it and then I'll be like, here, write it this way or change this. And it's so it's definitely part of our future. So that's what I've been using for, especially for the Athena Chronicles. And uh, I, 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 I'm just, it's, it's just a crazy time to be alive right now to see the old world going away and this new world beginning or already here. All right. So where do I see us in the next few years? I kind of mentioned this in the video, last, last video. Um, I, I see this like I've been saying, it's only gonna get better faster, more detailed. Um, jobs will change, especially in entertainment, especially on the commercial side, especially in art on the commercial side. Oh, yeah. Uh, especially in entertainment, uh, education. This is, uh, this is our future. And where we're headed, like I, I said in the last video, I don't think there'll be a need for special effects at some point. I think you'll always kind of need a human there. I think eventually it'll take a while before we it won't need a human. And I, well, you'll still need a human to put the idea out there. But uh, for the most part, it'll be AI, movies, it's crazy to think, actors and uh, uh, film crews may not be needed anymore. Um, movies will just be generated. And say if the day comes where AI does become sentient and then we, the, the question of consciousness comes up um, and they become very much like us, if not better, smarter, they're gonna demand rights. And uh, uh, that is the, um, it's inevitable. It's, uh, look at that, inedible? Inevitable. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's only a matter of time. And uh, uh, we'll have to, that'll be a, a new thing we'll have to look at as a species, as our own civilization. It'll, we'll probably see another uh, civil rights movement because of it. Because uh, when we start making things that comprehend and start seeing things from a, a certain point of view, a perspective where they feel pain or emotions, uh, or at least from their, the way they understand emotions. Uh, that is the question when, uh, do they deserve rights? So I think that's where the technology will be taking us. I think our world's going to be changing a lot faster because of it. Uh, will autonomous cars, will have AI. I think accidents will go down. Um, I think it'll be a while before like, we get the full 95% of the entire world's got just robots driving us around, but uh, it will change a lot. I think eventually, thanks to AI, we'll probably cure most, if not all, disease. Um, I don't know if we'll see it in our lifetime. I personally feel like we're on the verge of finally curing cancer. Uh, uh, in fact, in my story, my, in my project, there's a, there's a part where I touch on that too, that uh, and I, this is all from basing what I've listened to from experts and other people making their predictions. I, I put it, of course, mine's fiction, but I put it in there and I'd say around 2029, 20, 2030, 20, thanks to AI, humans finally were able to cure cancer and the world just stopped when they saw it on the news. Like, I even put that in, in, uh, in, uh, in Mid Journey, a prompt to see what it would look like if just to get the idea in my mind of one day we don't have to worry about cancer anymore, any form of it. It's completely, it's, it's, it's no problem anymore. And uh, like Times Square, they all stop and look, and the world's just frozen. And uh, to think that your loved one who's sick and not doing so well, and you, only, you think they have, their days are numbered, you only have so much time with them, and then you're sitting there together, it doesn't matter what stage it is, stage one or stage four, uh, you're sitting there with your loved one and there's nothing to worry about anymore. It's, it's gone. And uh, 
yeah. I think that's where, uh, where I think the technology is taking us. I think it's going to make it far easier too to be a spacefaring species. Like we'll be able to travel to places a lot better, a lot more efficiently, a lot easier. Over time, it'll be less dangerous because of the use of AI. And uh, uh, there's talks of that. Maybe <clears throat> one day we will be something else, not beings of biology, but more machine or a combination of both because you kind of look back you can see the pattern of the way the world is and technology is getting smaller and smaller and these cell phones here are getting smaller eventually i think we'll just merge with it and we'll be a totally different species we'll evolve into something far beyond this and it will make us smarter faster stronger live longer maybe we'll become one day we won't have to worry about the notion of death so, yeah. But anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for joining me in this three-part video on uh, art and AI. I've very much enjoyed doing it. I'm looking forward to moving on and doing some other stuff, trying out some things I talked about on this channel. Um, but if you guys have any ideas you want me to talk about that's related to art and film or AI, uh, I'm certainly down for exploring that. And uh, yeah, leave in the comments. If you have any questions, yeah, hit me up. And uh, yeah, if you like this content, feel free to like and or subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a crazy future on the horizon, but I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna get weird. They say by, if it's true, 2030, the world's gonna look completely unrecognizable. So, than what it was. But it might be one of those things where we'll look back and be like, oh yeah, or we'll, we'll notice it because so much crazy technology is coming out now so all right guys i'm out of here i gotta get my stomach is growling i gotta get some dinner thank you so much and i'll see you guys in the next video thank you so much bye